Um, it's the true crime drama series that has got the nation absolutely gripped, telling the story of serial killer Charles Sabraj and the unwitting diplomat Herman Knippenberg, who risked everything in his bid to bring one of the world's most wanted men to justice. Now, if you haven't seen The Serpent, here is the story so far. Well, in his first ever TV interview, the real-life super sleuth who put the killer behind bars joins us now. Hi, Herman Knippenberg. It is very, very good to talk to you, Herman. Uh, the country here is gripped by the serpent, this thriller. I know that you have been asked many times to, to consult on documentaries or take part in them or films. Why this time? Why did you say yes to this drama? Because it uh, would, uh, would give me the chance to um, extend a warning to travellers mm. that they have to be careful because uh, in paradise there may be uh, the serpent lurking somewhere. It's, uh, it's, um, it's absolutely necessary to, uh, when one goes uh, uh, into the wild blue yonder of foreign countries and so on, to be careful in terms of meeting people. Now, Herman, in uh, the series, you're portrayed as a kind of bit of an underling at the Dutch embassy. Um, how does it feel to see yourself on screen and how true to real life was uh, the portrayal of you and the killer, uh, the serial killer, Charles Sabrage? Uh, I think that Billy Hull, who I just uh, heard, mm. but it's in the clip, but it's when you were playing it and so on, uh, Fantastic job! It was uh, so real at times that, in in some of the of the uh, scenes which I saw, that I uh, had to, uh, I was absolutely gripped myself, and I had to to, uh, to 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 make up my mind whether indeed it was as Billy Hall played it, or uh, let's say as I had experienced it. It came dangerously close. Now. For people who haven't seen the show, we should explain that people uh, have been found dead but, and you go and visit the bodies in the mortuary. Was that the pivotal moment that made you decide you'd make it your life's work to track down this killer? Absolutely. Uh, that was the moment in which I decided that uh, an ab it was absolute imperative uh, to stop the killing. And uh, as I have uh, said um, uh, to friends and so on before, even if it would not uh, be uh, within the parameters of my official work, if I could make the difference, I felt at that moment I should and I would. Herman, um, as Janet pointed out, um, the, the pursuit of this killer, Zabraj, took over your whole life. And in fact, you... You, you, you said that you think it possibly did um, not help your, your marriage either. But when you actually got the chance to meet this killer face to face, you turned down the opportunity. Can you tell us why you refused to meet this man who had really ruled your life? Uh, two reasons. In the first place, because my ambassador had made abundantly clear that uh, I uh, would have to stay out of it directly. Um, for example, I was uh, asked uh, or I was invited by the police to participate in the raid and the ambassador said no, um, an absolute decisive no. Uh, and he said, you are old and wise enough to realize that if you are uh, killed or shot or whatever, that's very difficult to explain to the ministry that one of my diplomatic uh, uh, underlings is uh, participating in police raids. That was uh, uh, one thing. And then the second, uh, for, for the second reason, I felt, um, given the fact that we were in Thailand and the situation was rather unclear, that it also might be wise that some of us would stay in the background in case um, the situation would run out of control. And I think that was a very wise decision in the, because, as we all know, it did run out of control. They did escape from the police. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, he was a despicable character, but he seemed to revel in his notoriety and became somewhat of a celebrity in Paris. Was that galling for you to witness that going on, Herman? Very much so. But to, to, to organise 
um, and orchestrate lunches in which uh, rich uh, foreigners, mainly Americans, would be paying a couple of thousand dollars per head in order to have the privilege of having lunch with the serial killer. That I thought was, uh, from a moral point of view, of course, was absolutely disgusting. But uh, let's say, given the fact, of course, that uh, we could not touch him or he had escaped for the time being, at least uh, what is it, uh, from Thailand, where the uh, where they were still um, for a while um, looking for him. And so it was, was for me and I think for the others too of the action committee, very difficult to take. Herman, mm. uh, what I would want to ask you, what would you say to him if you was face to face with him now? Uh, if I would be face to face with him now, I would uh, be, uh, be asking uh, what happened to the young lady was it whose letter half written I saw when we were uh, having when we were in uh, his former apartment on a diplomatic inspection visit as we euphemistically called it and I would want to know the dear mummy letter which we found and so on what happened to the poor girl who wrote it Right. Can I ask you, I Herman, I... about uh, the role played by Jenna Coleman? She plays Monique, who starts the series as Marie, a naive French-Canadian uh, tourist who gets completely groomed by this killer. And yet, in the end, it was her confession that got him jailed, wasn't it? Yes, but it was a very tragic story. It was undoubtedly <clears throat> a question of bondage. It must have been something like... Um, Sobrash must have been something for her as heroine or suddenly getting a key role in a movie. And so on, that it was, was very difficult um, seeing the applause and, uh, uh, and, and um, the, the addictive effect his charisma and so on, which was, of course, very strong. She certainly felt that she was being put on the pedestal, people adored her and so on, but the, at the same time, of course, uh, in calmer moments, she must have realised, and according to what you see in the story, she did, and so on, that um, uh, at a certain moment, uh, the, uh, uh, she would have to pay the bill. It's the... Um, but it, it, it's a very... But at the same time, of course, that apart from this bondage and heroin effect or how you want to, to see it, I think, uh, too, that there were uh, numerous occasions in, the, in her life with uh, Sobraj that she could have escaped. Uh, of course, to say that, no, I do not have a passport and I do not have money, that was absolutely not true. We also know from witness statements that, in some cases, she was the person who really spurred people on to drink the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the, the drinks she had poisoned before. And, um, well, Herman, and, it is, it in, is in absolutely... Fact, it's it's I, a fascinating... I'm so sorry to interrupt you, because, unfortunately, we've run out of time and there's so much to talk about. As I've said, uh, you know, the, the, the series is absolutely gripping. Uh, episode 7 continues on BBC One this Sunday at 9 o'clock. Thank you so much for staying up to talk to us. I know it's very, very late there in New Zealand. It's been absolutely fascinating to meet you and hear your side of the story. Thank you so much. A privilege and a pleasure for me. Thank you very much. Thank you.